after you collect your data and have your big spreadsheet, you want to find a way to organize and graph your data so that you can actually interpret it. Imagine that you have a spreadsheet uh, like this full of data and you have all of your individuals that responded, all of your subjects who took the survey and you can see here their favorite core subject, they chose different options of your categorical variable. You gave them the choice of math, science, English, or social studies and you see all the different things that people picked. If you want to boil that down, you're going to want to create it into some sort of uh, set of counts, set of frequencies, or a frequency chart. And we're going to look at an example using favorite color. Imagine in the survey 50 people took the survey and they had to choose one of these four colors, either red, purple, green, or gold. If you go through your big list, go through your spreadsheet, count everyone up, you're going to find that there were five people that chose red, five that chose purple, 25 that chose green, and 15 that chose gold. So those are the counts. If you go through the, the big spreadsheet and count them up, this is what you would get. And to create a frequency chart, all you do is you take your options that you have, your green, your gold, your red, and your purple, list them in the chart on the left side here, and then on the right side you just put the frequency or how many times that that number came up. So green came up 25 times, gold came up 15 times, red as an option came up 5 times, and purple as an option came up 5 times. So this would be a frequency chart. Now the problem with frequency charts is that you don't necessarily know, unless you add it all up, how many people in total there were. Sometimes you might put a total column at the bottom to make that a little bit easier, but even more commonly you'll see something called relative frequency. And the relative frequency is how often something comes up compared to the total. So in the case of green, the relative frequency would not just be 25, but it would be 25 out of 50, because there were 50 total people that took the survey. And 25 out of 50 is going to be 0.5, or more commonly expressed as 50%. So if you want to figure out, oh, half of the people said green is their answer, that tends to be more useful than 25 out of an unknown number uh, selected green. And you do the same thing with the others. So with gold, 15 out of 50 is going to be... Uh, 30%, so 0.3 or 30% is what you're looking for there. And you do the same with the remaining options. So the red's going to be 5 out of 50, which is 10%, and the purple is going to be 5 out of 50, which is 10%. So the relative frequency could express it as a decimal, but more often you're going to see it as a percentage. Once you have your frequencies and relative frequencies, you can use that to create a couple different types of graphs. First one is a bar graph. Whenever you're graphing something, you want to label it because the whole point of a graph is to make it easy to interpret data. And the data is not going to be very easy to interpret if you don't know what it is. So favorite colors of students is what I decided to call this one. And across the bottom, you're going to have your different options, your different things. So green, gold, red, purple. Generally on a bar graph, it's nice to have your most common option come first and go down in order. doesn't necessarily have to, but that's a, a common way of doing it. On the left side is your frequency, how many. So you're going to count at even intervals. You don't want to have it go up at different rates. So 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And generally you want to start at 0 because otherwise your graph can tend to be a little bit misleading. So our green option of 25, we're going to draw a bar going all the way up to the 25 and back down, right over the green. You're going to leave a space. You can do the same thing for gold. Go up to 15. Hopefully you draw a little straighter than I do with my mouse. Your red, you've got 5. And then purple, you've got 5. Same idea. So this would be a bar graph, and when you look at this, you see, oh, the green bar is a lot taller than all the other ones. That's the most common option. The gold one, medium height, pretty common, and then this red and purple are both equal and not very common. So very quickly from a bar graph, you can see that. The other thing that's nice about a bar graph is it's, 
it allows you to get pretty specific data such as following your line back to here and you can say it's pretty close to 15 people that said gold or it's pretty close to 25 people that said green. So a bar graph is going to make it easy to get exact values that you can read back. Another common graph is a pie graph or circle graph. Again, I always start with a label. With a circle graph, you're always using percentages. It's some fraction of the whole circle that you're trying to uh, break apart. And as a result, pie graphs are very good at showing what percentage or relative frequency uh, each option has. So green at 50% is going to take up half the circle. So you're going to want to draw something that fills in half your circle right away. And then you can label that. So some people will label right in the circle, green 50%. Sometimes it's labeled on the outside. Next option, we have gold at 30%. Remember, uh, a fourth would be 25%, so something a little bigger than a fourth is going to be 30%. And generally, when we're sketching these by hand, we're just doing our best estimate. But you want it to be pretty close. And then our last two, 10% uh, and 10% are going to add up to each less than uh, a fourth. Or together, they're going to be less than a fourth. So this little area right here, each of these looks like about a tenth of the circle. And then we can throw our labels in there if they fit. And our percentages. Sometimes you only do the labels in there and don't do the percentages. Sometimes you do the frequencies. It's a little bit flexible on how exactly you want to label your graph. It kind of depends on who your audience might be, who's going to look at it. You can get fancy with how you format things. Um, and what you'll find with a lot of graphs is there's a lot of flexibility in how you do it. It's all about what your purpose is, what you're trying to communicate, and how clearly you can do it. I could even color in the different areas of this pie graph in the, the people's favorite color. So I can make this green, this gold, and so forth. So there's lots of flexibility. Whenever you use Google Forms to do your survey, it'll automatically generate a bunch of graphs like this for you. Uh, when you use categorical variables where you have two or more options for people to choose, it'll create a pie graph, a circle graph, because generally you're interested in what percentage or what fraction. In this case you can see that Batman is overwhelmingly more popular than Iron Man uh, in the group of people that took this survey, and the pie graph makes that very clear. Another type of graph here, this is with the scale question, how strongly do you feel about a vote 1 to 5? And you can see the different uh, responses people gave. And this is set up like a bar graph. There's a space between the bars. Each bar uh, corresponds to a frequency over on the left. And uh, unlike the bar graph I drew where I put the bars in order from tallest to uh, shortest, it makes sense in this case, because of the options being 1 to 5, to keep them in their particular order. Colors don't have any inherent order. The numbers 1 to 5, how strongly you feel, do, so it makes sense to do it this way instead. Google, unfortunately, doesn't have support to create graphs out of a list of numbers, but uh, when we get uh, into some more numerical analysis, whenever we have lists of numbers, distributions of numbers, what we'll do is we'll turn them into histograms. They're kind of like a bar graph. This graph right here is actually very similar to a histogram. Uh, whenever you have a bar graph of numbers in order, particularly with lots of different options like that, it makes it easy to see, oh, there's very few people on the low end, or very many people on the low end. Lots of people have one or two or three siblings. And then up on the high end, there's very, very few that have more than that have four or more siblings. Same thing with pets here. You see uh, a lot in the zero to three, and then it really starts to trail off on the high end. And that's just a quick introduction to using graphs to interpret your data. We'll spend a lot more time with numerical graphs in our next module.